so uh, let's start. Let's start this way. Break your. I'm looking at your schedule. Break it down for me. How long are you guys practicing? So we have three. Well, let's just start there. We got two hour practices. So, Every one of our practices is two hours. So you, you go full two hour practice from six to okay. eight. Yes. All during right. camp, it's five days a week, once a day, and during the season, it's three days a week. Okay. All right. And then is that just offense or are you guys trying to do both in there? Yeah. So we typically do offensive days and defensive days separately. But what's your thoughts on that? Do you care? Do you uh, no. I mean, obviously, I've, I've been blessed. Everywhere I've been, we, I mean, I've been able to practice offense every day. I've never had to, to worry about sharing a whole lot. Um, if it was, it was just one or two <laughs> skilled players. Uh, I mean, even when we were in single A ball, you know, we, we went out there with 25 players and we had 22 starters. I mean, nice. they were a pretty good 22, but, but, uh, yeah, that's, I'd that's say about 10, awesome. yeah, about uh, 10 of our players probably will go kind of play significant both ways. I mean, I, honestly, I think at your level, I think they should. At uh, middle school, you don't know what they're going to be yet. Let them play exactly. both sides and see, see what they're going to be because. Heck, we, we get him. Kid might have been a linebacker and left tackle, and all of a sudden he comes to me and he's playing tight end or he's playing slot receiver. They change so much. Go ahead and let him have to play whatever they need to play. Do whatever you exactly. need to do to win games, right? So, 6 to 620, I want to this year have, instead of doing a traditional static warm up, I want to have the receivers and quarterbacks do pat and go and settle a noose. And I would like to have these O linemen warming up with actual drills. Um, right. And I would assume it would be like pass pro step throughs and ladder drills. And I heard you say sled. I, I got excited when I heard that on the video that you guys do sled work before practice, or I mean, during yeah. warm ups. So, yeah, that's um, our warm up. Yeah, the ladder and the sled are our warm up every day. Okay, so ladder, ladder for what? Like five minutes, ten minutes? Uh, I mean, if you got twenty. If we're if we're going through it pretty quick, I mean, it, it, it's probably ten minutes. Okay. That's one of the things we're blessed. I mean, you're blessed with an OL is you're not on a clock. So you yeah. might be – we always break it down where you know, I might have 25 minutes. You know, I'll, I'll show you how my schedule's broken down in a second. But, yeah. the, uh, you know, we might have 25-minute block that's just me and the O-line. If I'm coaching O-line or whoever's coaching for me, you know, they, they have 25 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, straight of it's them and the O-line. Get what you need to get done. So it might not. It might be a, a three-minute drill with an eight-minute drill with a two-minute drill with a five. It's whatever the drill takes. Mm -hmm. um, there are mm -hmm. certain things we do every day, and I'll go over all those with you because you got all my drills. Really, I'll tell you yeah. what I do each day and kind of how I break it up. All right. But I do right. think the period breaking it up into the periods and trying to keep your old line coach, which is going to be you this year, by himself as long as possible is the best thing. I mean, so right here when it was me coaching O line, I loved it. All my online coaches have loved it. You know, they go by themselves all the way through practice. And then even here, all right, when we get to Skelly, seven on seven, we're over there throwing the ball, you know, working on our passing game. That's without the O-line. The O-line coach and the D-line coach are by themselves on a, on a different part of the field doing the one-on-one -on -one pass pro, which I've told you is the absolute number one thing you have to do. And yeah. my O-line coach controls that. You know, I think that's a huge deal. D-line coaches tend to get too jacked up, too excited, and they get too competitive, and they get mad about, well, I need a guy here. We don't really play a three – I don't care if you play a three technique. My guard has to have somebody on him to block. Cover up all five <laughs> of my freaking linemen and let's go. You know, everyone needs to learn how to pass rush. It don't matter what man they're on. Work your pass rush moves. But, and so we're shotgunning reps right there. But my O-line coach, he's working with the D-line coach, but he's running that. And then right here, now he's working pass pro scheme, you know, a lot of times that's just a walkthrough period. Sometimes we'll borrow the D-line. But, again, we're just building. So, all this time, my O-line coach is working. And it's not until we get to that screen period where now he comes together with, with, with skill players. He hadn't even seen a skill player in practice yet until right. period. Three. And that's, and that yeah, that's halfway the through. All the stuff you need. It's all building up. So, they're by themselves almost the whole practice. Then they go screen, option, inside run, and team together. I love that it's so separate and literally it could be the first hour of practice where we're just working whatever we need to work with as an O-line. I think, I think you have to on O-line. Cause like you said, counter's not going right. If you need to, then you're going to, you can go out there and all right, stand here, put the twos right here. Let's walk through. It gives you the chance to be a coach and adjust to what you need to do. 
And there's been times where I've done that. Like I said, I do those drills right there. I told you every single day. Um, the only other one I would add for my run drills, you know, back, especially if you're a, a power team, you know, is, is I would also do some kind of combo drill. And that's one where I would have to change it a little bit. Cause I would go through and some days it'd be a power combo, like for ISO or for uh, counter or for gap, or in some days it'd be a zone combo for our mid zone scheme. You know, I would change that up, but we'd do some kind of combo drill each day too. All right. right. So yeah, we do. We do need that for power. We run power too. Absolutely. You gotta learn how to mate. I mean, if you can't mate, you can't run power. Set and punch. Uh, so yeah. So let me ask you about that drill in particular. Set and punch. I mean, just talk me through the the main talking points. So we're gonna do what you what you're suggesting. Uh, two step vertical drop. Try to get back back pedal. Two steps. Get yourself set. I think I heard one of your main talking points kind of getting your eyes below their eyes what else would you say on that one because i really want okay. obviously that right. I, I don't i don't really teach two steps i tell oh, you them don't. They're, no they're gonna they're gonna back up as far as they can until contact the defense oh. determines when we hit when they i would it happens at two steps quite a bit especially on the interior but but not always um the biggest thing on set and punch um is learning to set to leverage. The whole key to the, the pass pro is learning how to put your body on the inside half of the defensive guy you're trying to block until the last possible second. Once you guys lock up, now you're squared up. But you cannot get beat inside. And that, that whole drill is learning how to drop either on a 45 left straight or a 45 right. And you know that, that angle changes depending on the alignment. That's the basic concept is no matter what, that you're backing up where, yeah. all right, so here's the ball. Ball's on this side. All right, so if you the D lineman, all right, let's just say this is a guard. So that you have a three right here. All right, he's already lined up where you want him to be. So if that guy was tight on my three, which most of the time he is as a, on a guard, then I would be pass setting straight back. All right, that would be my pass because I'm already inside. Yeah. Right? If this guy widened, then I would start widening with him, staying on the inside part. All right. If he tried to cross my face, then I would work hard inside to stay on the inside half. All right. Now, same deal. If this is the ball, but now I have a one technique. I know I got to work my ass off now. Now I got to work like hell because I have to set to the inside half of him. I cannot let a, a defender be inside of me. Now, if my center ends up helping me, if I know he's helping, then I don't have to rush quite as big. But as long as I'm thinking I'm blocking him by myself, I have to fight to get to his inside half. Because if I get beat outside, you, you saw my drill. I can watch him by and we'll live with it. But it's yeah. death to be beat inside. Cardinal sin. I'll, get, I'll fire a guy for getting beat inside. All right, I'm going to yeah. chew his ass for that because that's a manhood thing. We don't get beat inside. Right? Never. <laughs> that, that cannot happen. All right. The hardest one is really, you know, especially at your level, because I know you guys are going to see some studs. They're going to put some damn athletes out here as wide sixes and just rush their ass to the quarterback. That's the hardest one because the science tells us to back straight up and intercept it. But I'll, I'm here to tell you that don't work mm. because, because what happens is that guy backs up to intercept the angle. That's true. That's a better athlete who is running full damn speed by the time he gets there. So if he hits right. you, he blows you up. If he's just a really good athlete, he shakes him in space. So you end up still having to set slightly at the angle and trying to intercept it. And that's the hardest one because you really got to work. You can't overset it and let him dip you back. You really got to get to the inside half and live with, all right, we got a stalemate sideways. I'm just going to push him by the pocket. Right. But ride, luckily, ride those, those athletic guys, a lot of times they'll let you do that. They don't like getting bodied up. If you'll just be <laughs> pressing set and get on them, you're, you're, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's genius. And yeah, it's, it's five on five up there. I mean, re it really yeah. is. Yes. And, and yeah, the Reggie Whites are the ones that scare you, the ones that can outspeed yeah. you and knock you on your ass. Those, those are the ones that Correct. are hard to block. Right. They get you moving and then he just freaking just arms you down and just right. knocks you off. So yeah, yeah. Will you, that's what I was going to ask you to do. Will you draw? I just want to show it for myself and other coaches. If we see a five man front, um, how you get the running back involved with the blitzes. Okay. 
Uh, you seen a five two, or you seen like a five? Uh, three? I would say five three, and it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got if you seen a five three, you're probably in trouble. I mean, it is they. I mean, just because they can't outnumber you, but if you get a true, you know, they they're covering up, they're g down on everybody, like that. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's just all right. Mono and okay. mono. I'm seeing, if we're seeing this, and we're probably going to be in some kind of doubles, mm -hmm. all right? If they go zero, you got to know you're outnumbered. You got you got to have you got to have an answer to get the ball out. As long as they're playing a safety, then you're okay. All right. Yeah. So if they play, you know, if they take the guys out here like this, now that only leaves one backer in the box. All right. So if you're going to do that, then your running backs, if those guys are covered, then he's going to take the single linebacker. If that linebacker doesn't blitz, he has to scan for everybody. Right. All right. And he already knows if it's all five up there, he's chances are he's probably going to be helping in pass pro because that means that yep. they're a pressure defense. Now, what a lot of teams will do to you, unfortunately, is you know they're going to bring a safety over here and they're going to go ahead and bring that other guy back in the box and just say the heck with it. We're going to play quarters or we're going to play, you know, we'll play soft man or cover four and we're going to put the other seven in the box and middle finger you. We're going to, we're going to bring it. If that happens, then he's got to take the closest threat. All right. Cause I mean, those guys are obviously going to lock up with their five. They don't have any choices. So he's going to take the closest threat. If they both come, it would end up being this guy. You know, if, this guy backs out, then he would immediately get his eyes to this guy. He's got to kind of scan and see the whole picture. It's yeah. not a great answer, but it is the answer. And then the other answer is if you've got a team that is committed to doing that, then you have to be committed to we're going to throw the Roger to the tailback and make yeah. that guy make a tackle. If they want to keep bringing seven, then you got to be willing to take one, two, three, turn and throw it to him out here and let him be the best athlete on the field because he probably is. I mean, you got an animal at tailback, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, that's – yeah, youth football especially. So, yeah, I mean, I, that's that's my answer. Like, okay, well, keep doing that. That's fine. Um, yeah, I just – we almost have to – I mean, you just have to be, be vigilant with it and just throw it out there and just make sure that that quarterback is ready to perform. I mean, you guys saw how good my quarterback last year was, but he actually had a lot of trouble with this exact scenario. He would – you would kind of get jittery and, and he'd have a hard time just hitting the swing route um, right. because he'd be all in his head about it. And it's like, dude, you can throw 40 yard dimes on the run. It's really mm -hmm. like, freaks and calm down. Um, and, and that's where, and that's where you do have to practice it. You almost have to, you know, I'll, I'll get the pool, noodle, the, the pool noodles out. And I'll make my guy throw those balls, including that one, that swing route, one, two, three hitch and throw as I'm knocking the shit out of him with a pool noodle. <laughs> you know, just because, look, dude, ain't gonna, you, you're fine. You're here because you're a tough guy. You're going to be fine. Throw that ball. Get it out. Yeah. And I haven't done this. You know, the head coach I work for now, though, he wants to. Uh, that's not true. We did do it one day. But we'll some, he sometimes, he takes the whole O-line out. And yeah. We'll throw, we'll throw a quick game with the D-line and tell him, catch that ball and throw it. You have time. They cannot, they cannot run six yards from their hand on the ground and get to you before you get the ball out. It's okay. Now imagine how good it's going to be when we have guys blocking for you. So oh, it's actually man. brilliant. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah have, have faith, man. Because honestly, if they put – if you take nobody up here and you run double slant, you can get that ball out. There's no way you can't get that ball out on double slant, whether you block a soul or not. I mean, so throw it. Because even if, if those guys are all pressure guys, it don't matter which dude you throw it to. They're playing man. If he, you throw it here, he's got to win. If you throw it here, that guy covered him, he's probably open too. All right. So just have some easy answers and don't make a quarterback think. All right. That's why I like the Rodgers because it's a screen. One, two, three, turn and throw. There ain't no thinking in it. I called F Roger. You're throwing it to my tailback. And same thing here. You know, we'll call skinny post. We'll call, we call, uh, this would be six Florida for us where we go double post for that very reason. All right. If you're going to bring these guys up, down here five, six yards and try and play man, then fine. I'll take my quarterback one, two, three, and throw it over the top and just see if, if my best playmakers can go get it. You cannot get to my quarterback before I do that. It's impossible. I don't care if you no. put – I don't care if you put stud right there, unblocked, and sprint him. He cannot stop me from going one, two, three, and throw it over the top. 
And if I got any kind of playmaker, I just make sure that's the side I throw it to. We'll take our two best receivers and put them on the same side and run double post. When teams play cover two or cover uh, or a tight zero against us, that's our, one of our first answers. Can you stop us from throwing it over your head to my best player? Because I know you can't get, I know you can't get to my quarterback in time. I love it. I love it. And, you know, just caught something that you said. So you call, so we've been, I've been teaching Larry and Roger to get more complex this year, going one, two, three, or four to the running back. Um, but just call, using their, the names of their, the, the initial of their position, that actually might make more sense to make. So there's no guessing. Tommy, what do you think? Like when we're doing that in practice, I feel like kids are having a hard time with the twos and the threes especially. I, I, I could literally read their lips counting like, okay, one, two. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's me. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. I know I know plenty of people that have done it your way and have been very successful. I think uh, uh, Tony Franklin does it that way. You know, and again, there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I, I guess I'm old school. When I learned from how we tagged who we were throwing it to. It was X Larry, H Larry, Z Larry, Y Roger, F Roger. I mean, we just, mm -hmm. whoever we were throwing that screen to, we tagged it. That's a good point, Tommy. Just so you know, uh, Shane is an awesome offensive coordinator, too. He, I'm just asking him for O-line because that's where I need the most help right now in my head. But if you have questions about air raid in general, Tommy, I mean, Shane's a ridiculous uh, guy to ask just in general. Um, wow. So, yeah, that is better. And, I, I yeah, and I, we didn't do it last year with the numbers, but I just wanted you to figure out a way to call it quicker. But I like the, I like the letters better. Okay, let's change yeah. that, Tommy. I'll see what that does for you. I'm sure you probably use the wristbands, but it also allows you to, to have one symbol. Like just for example, let's just say covering your eyeball is Roger, you know, for the Jolly Roger Pirate. So you could go Roger for anybody now, you know, hey, X Roger, F Roger, H Roger, and bam, you got the signal in there just that fat. It's Roger, we know it's a screen to the right, OL knows what to do. All you care about, who am I throwing it to? Well, you're throwing it to the F, you're throwing it to the H, you're throwing it to the X, you're throwing it to the Z. It just makes it fast and easy for us. I mean, that, again, that's just my opinion, but that's, that's how I've always done it. No, it's great. That's great, man. All right, cool. Um, any other – just be conscious of time here. Any other O-line every day, like, you have to do this? So I got on the pass pro, set drill, inside hands, opposite pressure. Uh, we're going to do shoot. We're going to we have to do shoot drills for every type of run that we do. Um, we're going to do that. We're going to start with ladder and shuffle with sled. Shuffle sled. I love that. Any other, you have to do it. Oh, yeah. We're going to do one on ones. Yeah. For pass pro. For, for individual drills, not really. I mean, those, those that, the, the, the ones you just said right there, those are my everyday drills. All right. Well, the ones that my guys know that we're going to do every day, all right. They always know that we are. We're going to start off, we're going to start off with ladders. A lot of times, a lot of times they would start off before I even got there because they knew. You know, my leaders would get down there, get them lined up, and they'd start going through because they, they already know what to do. All right, so they'd go through the ladders. Uh, we would do the shuffle drill on the sled. All right, that's, that was basically our warm-up right there. That's what we call our warm-up. Yeah. All right, and then we're, then we're going to go do our run blocks and the shoot drills. And, again, that's every day. All right, so we're going to do right base. Left base. All right, then we're gonna do what I call a zone. We're gonna do right zone, left zone. I'll, I'll warn you now. I'm my guys love me. I, I mean, my old line always loved playing for me, but I, I am merciless. I mean, we are flying through this stuff. You know, I, I don't I don't really do a whole lot of half speed crap. You know, and we're teaching maybe, but once we're going. I expect the right base step to be perfect. I expect it to do it three times full freaking speed. And they're going to have a target to run to, whether they're running to a cone, running to contact, running through a whisk. We're going to have something to make sure that they are finishing every single drill. I think that's absolutely critical. Um, and then we're going to pull left and right. Again, I always do this. We do three reps each direction every single day. And, uh, you know, I have a three-man – I always always had a three-man shoot, so we're going through there three at a time. And, you know, there might be one group of two or one group of one, but we're going to go through that. And I always made them run back around and come back the same way. I know some guys run them through and then run them back. 
I never liked doing that, especially if I set up a board for them to step over or mm. had them something to go hit or a cone set. Just to me, it's easier. They would run through and then jog back to the end of the line. That, again, right. that's just me. You can set it up any way you want. All right, and then for pass pro, we're always going to do a set drill. All right, we're always going to do inside hands. All right, and then we're always going to do opposite pressure. All right, and now remember, on some of that stuff, you can change that up a little bit each time as you're doing it. So inside hands, you know, I told you, especially early, I might just give them one direction for a while. You know, right. some days I might give them two directions. Some days I might give them the tornado and let them do whatever the hell they want and really <laughs> fight off that hands. You know, twist, pull, push, you know. And then there's some days, I, I didn't really talk a lot about this in the, the video, but, you know, inside hands, I won't do this all the time, but some days that opposite, I'm sorry, not inside hands, opposite pressure. Sometimes opposite pressure, we also talk about a push-pull because one of the things that teams started doing against us, we were so good at, at basically holding them, they started stepping back and pulling us down. So I had to teach my guys, when they pull you, you have to step forward with them so that you keep that good lock position so you don't get extended and pulled down because they couldn't get away from us. So they started trying, you know, trying to pull and rip. You know, a lot of guys are doing that now. So we had to teach how, what to do if they push or what to do if they pull and, uh, you know, bull rush. That, that all becomes part of my opposite pressure drill. So it's the base way of doing it all the time. But one day we might, hey, we got to do push pull today on that drill. We got to work opposite pressure going backwards and forwards. Or we got to learn how to sit on the bull or whatever your technique for bull, bull rush is. You got to work that on that drill. So you, there's some variety in there, but I'm going to do these three things every day. And then all those other drills you saw, I'm going to fit them in as needed. You know, we're going to fit, you know, as needed. We're going to do a spin drill. You know, we're going to do the, the rabbit drill. We're going to do the goalie drill. You know, those are those are part of my repertoire that we fit in as we need. But that first set I told you, those are every single day got to get done. And that's yeah. you know, when I talk to my middle school coaches. Those are the ones I wanted done because to me that's all basic football. I mean, footwork, movement, you know, moving left to right, all the fundamentals you're working here. You know, base step, zone step, which are angle steps. You know, base steps, angle steps, and pull steps. I don't care what offense you run; those are the base techniques right there teach it your way and then for pass pass rush you gotta be able to pass that you gotta be able to get the inside hands and get the lock and you gotta be able to drive the car you can do that everything else is gravy yeah and then when you are doing so and then you get into the the one-on-ones uh, -on where you get all tackle yeah. to tackle and you yeah, set all, them off the, in those yeah these are all my indie stuff right and, and then, then you get in the team about, after that yeah then we're gonna go Really, we're going to go, I should say, one-on-one uh, one -on -one next, all right? Then we're going to go with the D-line. Switch. All right, then we're going to go. Then we'll go to our competition stuff, which we're going to do one-on-one. -on -one. And then we're going to do some kind of unit, all right? And again, the unit, most of the time, in all honesty, this is, either walk through or self scout. A lot of times the D line goes over and wants to lick their wounds and start working on their own. They're, they're kind of pissed off because we kick their ass and they don't really want to help us. All right. But sometimes I gotta, I gotta play the card and make them, you know, bring your ass over here. I need to see this blitz. Something's giving us trouble. I need to see it or something just, we haven't worked on in a while that the team's going to do. But right here, we're going to work on you and make sure we know all of our base rules. But the biggest thing is here's where we're talking about the blitzes we've seen what we expect to see from that defense, all right? Because I don't want them to go into a game cold. You know, we have some base rules for blitzes, and sometimes we'll drill those up here too. You know, I probably should have said that. Every now and again, we're going to work switching on stuff just, just to learn how to switch on the stunts and all that kind of stuff. We'll drill that individually too. Um, Bump people off. Um, but basically, we walk through the scheme part of it here. This, this is one-on-one, -on -one and this is scheme. We do this for 10 minutes and this for five minutes every day. Nice. And then we're going to okay. go and we're going to do screen. We do it a couple different ways, but you already, you know, kind of how we do it. We're going to do one base screen a day, maybe, maybe two sometimes if we're 
some years, but basically for five minutes, we're going to run Larry and Roger, you know, or for five minutes, we're going to run a tunnel screen or for five minutes, we're going to run our slip screen. And that's all we're going to run. And we're going to learn, you know, you know, who's got the first man out the box, who's got the first man in the box and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to have all of our landmarks and we're going to run like hell to them, whether it's a cone, a body, we'll work different hashes and angles and fronts, you know, we'll throw stuff at them, but, for five minutes, we're going to work that one screen and get good at it every single day. Love it. So let me ask you something specific about team drill. During team, um, you get together, and maybe you guys don't do it this way, but I have always – well, last year, always. We did, like, four verticals as our – you know, we worked that during team. Um, and then the one, the one drop back, the one – the one um quick game the one shallow and or drop right. back during that are you having the linemen come together and and run those plays as a whole offense or are you keeping them separate and doing more one-on-ones or more pass pro drills when, they're, when we're doing the pass pro drills the skill guys are doing what you're talking about they're doing seven yeah. on seven yeah. They're working okay. on pass plays against a pass defense. Right. No pass okay. defense at all. That's all they're doing. All right. right. We go to what we call tracks. All right. That's when we're going to work our – we're working inside run. Our receivers are going to go over there, and they're going to do one-on-one. It could be one-on-one blocking. It could be one-on-one routes. It could be whatever. Some days they just want to work some more individual that the coaches don't work together at all. But we're going to do an inside run period. And we're going to work, you know, counter. You know, it might be counter from a tight end right, counter from tight end left, counter with a motion, quarterback counter. All the ways we plan on running counter that week, we're working it during that 10-minute period. And all this is – we know exactly what we're going to see. All right, so we already – here's our 10-play script for tracks that day. And all of our variations of counter that we expect to run in our game plan, we're doing that period right there. And we're seeing – Is that a full speed, full contact? Yes. Now we don't go to the ground though. Okay. We don't ever go to the ground in our team, our practices. We don't. Even, we don't right. even wear. You know, all we wear is a girdle. We don't even wear pants. Um, right. or knee pad. Yeah. Nice. We don't ever go to the ground on purpose. You know, we tell our tailbacks if you're running hard enough and they thud you and we all come together, we should be fine. Now your your ass is tiptoeing in there and get hit. You're going to go to the ground. That's your fault. <laughs> um, okay. We're pretty good. We, we we do a good job of protecting each other and you know not being stupid. You know we're not going to take the a blind shot on a receiver or any of that kind of stuff. We don't cut our own players. We're not cracking back on our own guys, all that kind of stuff. But, no, our inside, it's a tough physical practice. Um, and then option, option is basically the same thing, except it's option, but we will bring the receivers in there for that quite a bit because a lot of times they're a part of it. You know, they got to know when are they blocking a safety, when are they blocking the receiver on them, when are they cracking inside on a linebacker. Sometimes they're motioning to be the option guy. So a lot of times we bring the receivers in on this and it turns into a full team period, 11 on 11. And then we do a full team. And for us, that is 11 on 11. Our best are going to go against our best, at least some. Now we're going to filter some twos and threes because we don't want to wear our ones out. But we're going to see best on best at least a little bit. Um, and we're not as disciplined about – the play of the day like you were talking about when we get to this period right here we're we're working on our scripts here so mm-hmm. even though this might be a, a a 95 day you know 94 might be in my open list so if monday's my open day i'm gonna run 94 right there and so yeah. i'm still gonna call it me you know some guys don't some guys stick strictly to their their daily stuff and that's fine but you know we're gonna have a somewhere between 10 to 15 play script right here and we're going to go through that, that team period every day, and that script's going to change, right? So in all these other periods, we are, we are focusing on our plays of the day. On that option right there, we're either going to, we're going to run whatever our option is for that day. Um, mm-hmm. But when we get the team, it's all, it's all fair game. Our Love whole it. offense. Thank you. Thank you for breaking that down. I appreciate it, man. That's, uh, yeah. This is everything that I, that I was looking for. This is perfect for us staff we tried to impart on our youth coaches you can tell a difference between at at the middle school level or the rec level teams that understand how to structure a practice and build skills 
the guys that just go out there and, and run plays for an hour, they're not very good unless they just have the best players. I mean, if you're loaded with players, it really don't matter. But the guys that actually teach some skills and some drills and then bring them together and teach in small group and then bring it together and do team, they're better. Their kids know what to do and they can carry it through and, pr and do that stuff. The other ones are the ones that they run the wrong way, they hand the ball to the wrong guy, balls on the ground half the time, don't know where the receivers are standing. That's because they don't rep that stuff and don't practice it with any kind of structure. And you, I think you guys are way ahead of the game on that. That's why you're able to run mesh in middle schools because you practice it well. Yeah. Well, just reps, just uh, all you guys putting out your videos. I mean, it, it makes so much sense. And I'm just glad that people are responding to this and it sounds like we're getting more and more people to, to be, at least be open to, to start the process at that middle school level so far. So sure. you guys are definitely helping, helping these guys out uh, more than you probably know, to be honest. So it's just opening a lot of eyes. So I appreciate you being so willing to, to jump on these calls with us. I probably will tap you on the shoulder a couple more times before hopefully the season starts. Anytime, um, man. I appreciate it, man. So, all right, Thanks, Shane, we'll man. talk soon, bud. Yes, sir. All right, later.